Hello YouTubers, now today I'm talking about braided hoses. Now you don't find these in um, obviously ordinary cars. You can put them in but they're very expensive and it's just, well there's no point. They're more in kind of like rally cars and track cars, any kind of you know racing car. And the only reason I'm kind of doing a video on this is because I have an argument with Brian downstairs. He says to do them one way and I say to do them another way. Now, as it turns out, I was right. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, basically, I let him do it and then I pulled all his connections off and I said, look, you can't do that. The problem is, with braided hose, what he thought, and I suppose it can be an easy mistake compared to conventional copper hosing. When you obviously screw, as you can see, one connection, when you screw a connection in, uh, basically, what happens is, depending on which connections you've got at the end, you can actually get like a, um, a twist in the pipe like that. And obviously that's no good. You need the pipe to be straight. Now basically the way he connected it, as you can see, it just pulls straight off. So as soon as you put any pressure on brake or anything like that, it's just going to pop off. Where this connection, you should not be able to pop it off. So I'm just going to talk through basically how to put these connections on properly and what to basically look for and to try and stop the actual twist in the braided hose which can be very annoying especially when you're trying to get it nice and neat in the car especially when you know you go and run your across your engine bay and stuff where it has to be nice and neat and if scrutineers see twists and bends in it they're gonna fail it so we'll crack on we'll show you how to do it properly and help it help help it helps so I'm just gonna get the camera and remind Brian which way to do it? All right, Brian, just let you know, I'm just doing the connections. I'm going to do it my way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rubbing it in, are you? Oh, just zoom into you. Oh, that's maybe bad. How are you getting on? I'm not This is a nice with this uh, cab. Put it at That's a, uh, is that a mod inside your engine there? Oh, you can see. Which one? I haven't got one of them. A mod? Yeah, Which it's a big screwdriver you? stuck in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a very uh, technical mod. Is that a 100 horsepower extra, is it? When you turn it, and you get more horsepower. Well, you do, well, you do need it. Yeah, I mean. Right, well everyone, stick a screwdriver in your engine there. Brian says, Brian says you get, a, he says you get 100 horsepower, so there you go, you learn something new every day, 100 horsepower screwdriver, is it any particular screwdriver? It has to be red and yellow, it has to be red and yellow, and Phillips, oh and a Phillips, yeah. sorted, there you go. Now I'll just quickly run through, there's obviously millions and millions of different connections so it's very difficult to obviously go through them all. There's two different types of pipe and it's the thickness. This is dash three, which is basically these connections as you can see in my hand. And then you've got dash four and as you can see from the size difference, these are both the same connections, they're just dash three and dash four pipes. So it just depends what you actually need them for. But now, some of these connections, and I mean, they are ridiculously expensive. You know, they're over 20 euros a connection, some of them. Um, but they mainly are over 12, 13 euros a connection. So you have to be careful. You want to make sure you're buying the right ones because there's female fittings, there's male fittings, there's all sorts. So you need to know you're buying the right ones that are going to screw into each other. Like that's a male end there, and that's a female end in there. So I know once they go in, they're going to seal. They're not two males, they're not two females. So you want to be keeping an eye on that. Now, basically, uh, the connection can only be used once. So this is another slight problem. Well, I say once. Obviously, we have a 90 degree here. This is an M1090, so it's an M10 thread. Now, once you put the pipe in this end and you've actually crimped it there's a little olive here and that olive can only be used once now you can buy the olives separately which is very good because otherwise you're going to have to buy a new connection and it's going to literally cost you a fortune basically i'm going to make up a pipe 
like this today um, I need I've got a swivel connection on one end as you can see this end swivels and it happens to be a male and I need to put just one of these connections on the other end because there's a bulkhead connection that I'm screwing to and what I mean by that is there's a connection that goes through your bulkhead and you connect two pipes either side of it it saves you having to put drill a hole through your bulkhead and put the wire through so um, nothing can really get caught you still have to drill a hole for this but at least it, it, it stops any wear and tear on the pipe but the downside to it is you need more connections which is more money so I need to replace this it's a little bit too short by a couple of inches I can get away with it but I just want to basically replace it so I'm going to show you how to do it now as you can see I have my pipe this is the right length for me now and as you can see there's basically like stainless steel this is going to zoom in stainless steel wire on the outside and we've got a basically um, a Kevlar tube on the inside. Now, these are very, very strong, obviously, because they're used for rally cars. So basically, this is Brian's thought on it, to pair, pair back a lot of the wire, so you're left with a lot of the pipe. Now, basically what happens when you do that, I'm just gonna put this connection on the end of it. It's great in one way because this connection will just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and you can tighten it. Now, and the pipe doesn't bend. Well, that's great, but that doesn't give you a proper connection. So what you have to do, hopefully this is coming across on camera. I just chopped the end off. I'm gonna pair back a little bit of the actual wire. Not a lot, just a little bit. Now be careful, this stuff bites and it does bloody hurt. We need some sharp pliers for it now it's always a good thing is to make sure before you pair it back you have your connection on now lucky enough I've got an open-ended pipe so I'm actually okay in this end because I can slide my connection on and then we need a little olive and as you can see these olives Now what these actually do is once you crimp them in, once you put them in place and you tighten the actual bolt, it crimps it for you. But they can only be used once. These little olives, once they're used once, that's it. You have to replace the olive. So I'm just gonna straighten up this pipe a little bit. Now, as you can see, all I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I've just got a tiny bit of the thing exposed. I'm gonna put the olive on the plastic pipe so just get it on there. Let's give it a bit of a tap down. Now you don't have to be exactly precise with this because once you screw it down, the connection will do it for you. But I've got about half the stainless steel pipe that zooms in on the olive. So half the olive is covered with stainless steel pipe. So now I've got my connection. This is a swivel connection and it happens to be a male end which screws into the bulkhead but that doesn't really matter because obviously depend on what connections you use now all I'm going to do is you can see there's a little end on it I'm just going to slide that through the olive simple as that so I'm going to so let's put that through the olive and that just clips in just like that then I'm going to bring my connection up and literally as you can see screw my connection in now What's going to happen is, once it gets, like I can't obviously move it anymore, I need to get my spanners, which is a 14 and an 11 mil. I'm going to struggle to maybe do this on camera, but you'll get the idea. Now, as you can see, as I'm tightening this, the whole pipe and everything is moving, if you can see that. I can't stop that pipe from moving. This pipe is twisting. This is where it gets a bit tricky if you're inside the car, because what's happening is the olive is catching the little metal uh, strands on the pipe, which is making it tight. So obviously you can see the pipe twisting. I have to keep going until this is tight. I can do this end, but you get the idea. So it's gonna keep going now. Now, 
as we can see that is tight and believe me that isn't going anywhere but this is why it's important to have one end that's at least a swivel because the, this other end isn't a swivel I have to screw this end in first which is going to screw the whole pipe around like this but then at the end of it at least I have a swivel connection to stop this from kinking so that's one end in I'm going to do the same with the other end but before I do any cutting I'm going to slide my little connection down first Now, as you can see, we get in there again, peel back a little bit of it again, Not too much. in Bit of a tap. now I am basically now ready to put this in the car I have to put this end in first because this is the end with the non swivel and then I can connect this end afterwards so look it's as simple as that with these um, pipes really nothing really to it just be careful when you do it because obviously once you do it you can't reuse the little olives so you can damage your connections so just be careful because they're not cheap um, the pipe isn't cheap either so just you know you don't you don't get too much of it just kind of get what you need and yeah simple as that look I hope it helps if you ever doing anything like this thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one